in my last day I told you I'd be moving an enormous chunk of my aquascape that was covered in corals I decided I no longer wanted. Well that has now happened and I have good news and bad news on that front so today I'll show you how it went and I'll update you with a few other projects I'm working on on the tank. And if it's your first time here and you want a new reefing video every week make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. As many of you will already know, the celebrity who bought my corals was the UK's second best reefing YouTuber, Ryan from Prestige Reef. He made a video on the day he was here that I'll link in the description below. There was some great banter and Ryan went away with some awesome corals that he'll be selling on his website soon. So if you subscribe to his channel, you'll be able to see what he does with my lovely corals next week. Now here's the rock I sold, and while the corals individually are lovely, there were no bright colours and no real colour contrast, so they just didn't look as good next to each other as I wanted them to. And my intention is for this tank to be as close to perfect as possible, so I felt it was better to move them on and start again. However, I will miss some of the corals, in particular the Jason Fox Kryptonite Acro, which was two and a half years old and which I'd grown out from a one inch rag that cost me £150. Plus the Aquapora efflorescence, aka the $500 Eflo, which is a really nice tabling acro that you don't see very often. And finally the Monte Undata, which in my opinion is a massively underrated beginner SPS and mine look fantastic at almost a foot across. But I've already replaced the island with 5 kilos of Australian live rock and a nicely shaped piece of man-made Java branching rock which I drilled a number of holes in to make it easy to fix corals to. And because I'm impatient I've already bought half a dozen frags for the new scape. I bought all of these from other hobbyists and I'm really happy with my choices. They're much nicer pieces for a start but I've also picked some lovely colours and I've given more thought to contrast this time so these bad boys should really pop next to each other when they're grown out. Now I still have plenty of real estate on the main rock for more SPS corals, but I want to make sure I don't cram in too much, which is what I normally do because buying corals is pretty much as addictive as smack. So this time I'm going to be fussy with what I buy to make sure I'm not in this same position in 12 months time. Now despite letting go of some established aquapora colonies, I have no regrets about selling the rock and I'm excited to see how the new scape will pan out. But it didn't all go smoothly and unfortunately one of my favourite aquapora colonies started stripping a couple of days after I removed the rock. I don't know for sure what the cause was, but my alkalinity spiked by 1 dkh in half a day so I'm pretty sure it was that. It's annoying because I saw this coming but didn't do enough to prevent it. I set my alkalinity monitor to test every hour and I reduced my alkalinity dosing given I'd removed about 25% of my corals. However, I then forgot to check in on the test results for the alk and by the time I did it was too late. And the aquapora stripped even more the next day so I've now removed the entire colony and thrown away about 60% of it. I fragged off the bits that were still alive in the hope that they'll recover. Some of them look fine except for one or two frags, but I am hopeful so I'll see how they get on in the next couple of weeks. Now that was another colony I'd had for two and a half years so it is pretty gutting, but if the bits I've tried to save survive I'll be happy as I'll still be able to sell a few pieces and keep a good sized chunk for myself. And the silver lining is that it has freed up space for a lovely aquapora spatulata that I've bought. And given how big these grow, there weren't many other suitable spots in my tank for it, so I'm looking at this as making lemonade when the reefing gods have served me lemons. Now I've recently bought myself a Kalkwasser reactor that I plan to set up soon. Kalk doesn't seem very popular in the UK, but I've never really understood why. It'll reduce the money I have to spend on dosing liquids, but more importantly, it should give me a nice boost to pH, which in theory should help with my coral growth, health and colour. Now this will be my first time using calc, so I'll take it slowly, but I will report back with how I get on in due course. Now it's no secret that I have high phosphate levels in this tank, and I'm finally taking steps to rectify that. And this time I've made a concerted effort to do so in a way that is sustainable for me. I get lazy with changing Roophos because I find it such a faff. So I started dosing lanthanum chloride which brought my phosphate down from 0.34 to 0.08. However, I've read too many horror stories about using lanthanum long term, so now it's done its job of knocking off the worst 
I've switched to carbon dosing in the form of Tropic Marin Elimi NP and Bacto Balance. You're supposed to use Elimi NP when your phosphate is above 0.1 and Bacto Balance if it's between 0.03 and 0.1, which is where I want my phosphate to sit. The last time I tried this, I didn't test my nitrate and phosphate, which subsequently zeroed out and led to an outbreak of dinoflagellates. So this time I'm doing what I should have done before, take it slowly and test nitrate and phosphate two or three times a week. Now if this works in the way I've seen many people have success with, it'll be the perfect solution for me as I am far more likely to have success with anything I can dose automatically with as little involvement from me as possible. And finally, I have also upgraded my lights. I've removed the Orphic OR3 bar I had between my Evergrows and I've replaced it with two secondhand Kessel A360s. Now I've done so because firstly, I love the color and shimmer Kessels give and I miss that from the Kessels I've had in the past. But also I have a few Aquapora corals that are placed quite high up on my glass and at the far end of my tank on the weir box. And because Kessels give a much better spread than light bars, this should boost the par for those corals. The colour improvement the Kessel has given is instant and I love the way my tank looks during the day now, but you can't really see the shimmer because it gets overpowered by the Evergrows. So I may add another Kessel and turn the Evergrows down slightly to see if that bumps the shimmer up a bit. But this is now my ninth lighting configuration on this tank in only three and a half years and I'm always chasing perfection, which of course doesn't exist, so maybe one day I'll just stick with what I've got. Yeah, right. If you've got any questions then stick them down below and if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, happy reefing.